Okay, uh, this is a video uh, responding to a question that was uh, put to me about the Bible from Healthy Skeptic. Uh, he wrote and asked, uh, according to Genesis chapter 12, verses 11 through 17, Abraham and Sarah lie to the Pharaoh, and Abraham prostitutes his wife to the Pharaoh. Then God plagues Pharaoh. Why? Is Pharaoh punished? It makes it seem that lying and prostitution is acceptable when done in the name of the Lord. So that's his question. He wanted to know about that verse. Um, so I'm going to give a response to that. First, let's take a look at the actual text itself. Um, I'm going to do a couple extra verses on each end. I'm going to start at verse 10 and go all the way to 20. And I'm going to read from the New American Standard Bible here so you can get the context here. Now, there was a famine in the land, so Abraham went down to Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was severe in the land. And it came about, when he came near to Egypt, that he said to Sarah his wife, See now, I know that you're a beautiful woman, and when the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will let you live. Please say that you are my sister, so that it may be well with me because of you, and that I may live on account of you. And it came about when Abraham came into Egypt, the Egyptians saw that the woman was very beautiful. Pharaoh's officials saw her and praised her to Pharaoh, and the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. Therefore he treated Abraham well off for her sake, and gave him sheep and oxen and donkeys and male and female servants and female donkeys and camels. But the Lord struck Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarah, Abram's wife. When Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this you have done to me? Why did you not tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister, so that I took her for my wife? Now then, here is your wife. Take her and go. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they escorted him away with his wife and all that belonged to him. Okay. Referring back to your question, <clears throat> yes, Abraham lies here. Yep, they both lie to Pharaoh. And however, I would disagree with your point that Abraham is prostituting his wife to Pharaoh. No prostitution takes place here. What takes place here is you have a, a case of lying and unbelief on Abraham and Sarah's part, and then you've got the sleeping with somebody else's wife on the Pharaoh's part. Okay, first let's talk about Abram, which is later Abraham. His first problem is that he's not believing God uh, to fulfill his promises. God has already told him that he's going to be the father of many nations. And you can't do that when you're dead. However, um, Abraham is scared for his own life. Now, this is one showing that He's not too believing in what God had said, and also that he's being pretty selfish here at this point because he's covering his own butt in this case because he doesn't want to die. So he does this as a self-preservation measure, not as a way to gain monetary advantage from Pharaoh. So there's no prostitution because I don't because it seems clear that his purpose was not to gain but just to save his life. So he tells. Um, everybody that him and his wife are sisters. Now, of course, the other interesting thing about this whole story is that Abraham is 75 and Sarah's like 65 years old at this point. She must have been one of those like Elizabeth Taylor uh, women who, who aged really well because he keeps mentioning how beautiful she is even though she is supposedly 65 at this point. So then... Uh, Pharaoh takes her, and things start going bad for Pharaoh. This illustrates a couple points here uh, about the Bible and life. One, sometimes people suffer for things that other people do. You know, sometimes you can screw up, and somebody else suffers the consequences. Now, this happens in real life, and this is one of those situations where Abraham screws up here and it causes uh, somebody else to do something wrong and suffer consequences. In this case, Pharaoh. 
The other point is something that they talk about a lot in modern law, that ignorance of the law is no excuse. And uh, apparently this applies in this case as well. He was uh, with another man's wife, even though he did not know it was another man's wife, still he suffered the consequences for it. Interestingly, I give Pharaoh good credit for putting two and two together, thinking that, gee, everybody's sick in my house, something's not right here. And then he begins probably to go through in his mind, well, what has changed recently? Aha! Something's going on. You know, sisters, yeah, right. And so then Pharaoh puts two, to, two and two together and uh, gives you know, Abraham back his wife. So I think those are the two things that play into a fact here. Um, Abraham uh, and Sarah do get a lot of stuff out of it. I think that is just as one of the other things you'll see throughout the Bible is God has tendency to try to make the best of bad situations, this being one of them, and tries to work it out to people's benefit. Then, I guess finally, I would say um, it accomplished two things. Of course, Abraham goes back to uh, Canaan, which is where he should have been in the first place and not wandering around in Egypt. Again, Abraham not listening. And I'm sure this probably engendered uh, a relationship with his wife, how uh, she probably wasn't too happy about uh, being sent in with Pharaoh and uh, to save Abraham, although we don't really know about that. I'm speculating now and don't have any little scriptural proof for that. So I don't agree. I don't think this is indicating that lying uh, is acceptable when done in the name of the Lord. A, he wasn't doing it in the name of the Lord. B, there were negative consequences for people uh, because of their actions. So I hope that answers your question. And let's see, I think that's everything. All right. You got it? Have a good day.